Hello friends, welcome to my studio. I'm uh, making a video to show you the Rapid Flow template for Logic Pro, which we're super excited to release today. So yeah, here we go. Let me show you what this is and uh, what you can do with it. Okay, I hope it gives you a bit of an idea what we've done. And you may have seen our template on the internet for Ableton. What we've done is copied kind of a crazy Ableton workflow into Logic as it's now finally offering a, a cell workflow like this. So what you have in front of you is the template that we call Rapid Flow. You can get it on rapidflow.shop. And um, what we've done is created a workflow based on uh, things that I've picked up working with other people, taking master classes, watching countless YouTube videos, which allows you to make tracks really, really quickly. Uh, so if you have a look at uh, the template, you can see that uh, each of these segments of blocks is basically a track. They're like demo tracks inside this that you can use to get a feel for how loud should the kick drums be, the basses and st stuff like that. Uh, a lot of it is also in MIDI. So you can, uh, for example, use the drum kit. Um, but most of the, let's say, main uh, elements that make up a track are audio. And the idea is not that you use this to make a track that sounds like this. I expect you that once you get the levels of everything, that you erase everything except the MIDI parts and use it for your own um, songs. There are basically eight tracks that are available here. And uh, let me go over to this camera so I can show you better. I have mapped them to this APC. So if you have an APC, it's going to be probably really easy for you to start using this template. But actually mapping it was really challenging. Um, it's definitely complicated in Logic. I'll show you how we do that in a bit. As you can see, if we go over to Logic again on the mixer, there is a lot of settings that we have included for you as a starting point for your productions. So the main elements that make up, let's say, an electronic music track, although this does also translate to a lot of other styles, is, of course, your drums. We have a bass, a groove, which is usually like toms in, in my case, uh, some percussion elements, uh, a lead, a harmony, a hook or a voice, a voice, actually it says hox, that's a mistake, but should be vox or hook, and then an atmospheric or effect sound. And what we've realized is that with just those eight elements, you can very quickly create a track sketch with which you can see if this is going to actually become a cool track. You can play it live in a club the way I was just performing it using uh, the APC. And if the feedback you get from it is strong and you feel like, hey, this is actually a really good track, it's a good idea, it has a great hook or harmony, then you, of course you can take this and turn it into a full-blown track with arrangement and automation and more tracks probably also. But as a starting point to create ideas really quickly, this is a really, really great way to go. And I know a lot of people haven't worked much with this looping functionality in Logic. It's a really fast way to just test stuff without having to make a whole sequence to be able to play your track either live or, or to show it to people. So let me jump back into Logic and uh, show you, for example, just to begin with in the kick drum channel, what we've gone ahead and done. And let me solo this, which actually, because it's all mapped, all I have to do is just pull uh, the faders, I just have to make sure they've been all the way to the top so that Logic grabs them. And yeah, and now I can just listen to the drum elements. So as you can see, a lot of the uh, drums uh, or the, the stuff that you need to get started is all present in one very simple sampler. So our, our motto at Rapid Flow is uh, simplify, create, inspire. And what I've come to realize through years of making music is that 
the simpler your basic setup is, the faster it is to make ideas and the faster you also make progress. So what you get with the standard rapid flow template is this very basic kit, which has a couple of really good sounding kick drums, hi-hats and snares and claps. And with that, it's enough to make kind of a, a sketch of what it is that you're trying to do. And what we've done in the channels is we've done some trickery with gains and EQs and automation and things that, that we do. So here, for example, you can see that we've mapped uh, the fader of the APC, the master fader, which is not a good thing to have on stage. Uh, if you touch it by accident, you'll either clip or lose your sound. So what we've done is mapped it to a low cut, which just removes the low end on both the bass and the kick at the same time. So you can create kind of a, a build up using just that. Have a listen. It's that easy just to, to make something that, yeah, that feels like, hey, it's going somewhere and you can just do it all in real time, which is just so much fun to be able to do it this way. So one of the key things that I learned actually from watching a masterclass with Deadmau5 is that he uses limiters on a lot of his channels. And that's what we've done because it prevents peaks from hitting your overall master limiter. So we have Again, pushing it into the uh, limiter of uh, logic and then again to reduce again so that we come out on a reasonable level into the channel. And what you will see is also that the mix works when all the faders are at plus six. Let me show it to you here quickly. which is something that I picked up from watching something from Kalkbrenner, which is how he works with his Mackie mixer. He has all the faders at the top and then gains it so that he knows if he wants to get back to his track, he just puts the faders all the way up. And so we've done that on every channel so that even if you add new elements and maybe your new baseline has too much sub bass and it's not cutting through the mix, the limiter is going to grab it and you're going to see immediately in here, hey, something's not working. So if you stick to this gain structure in each of these eight elements that make up a track, you're going to have a really good and loud sounding mix at the end of it. What I realize I haven't shared with you is maybe some some background on myself and, and you know why I went ahead and did this. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Eric. Uh, I'm a musician and sound engineer. I've been working in music for 25 years. I studied uh, sound engineering at uh, School of Audio Engineering in Amsterdam, I think somewhere in the 90s. Uh, so yeah, pretty long time ago and um, worked uh, a lot on uh, festivals, uh, played on festivals and, and clubs, uh, worked as a sound engineer on festivals and mostly electronic music, some acoustic music also. And um, after my training and working in the field uh, for a number of years, uh, what I came to realize is that making music on a, on a computer or on a dollar setup can be amazingly fun. But if you want it to actually sound good, that's another pair of shoes. Like it's one thing to make a track that's engaging and interesting. It's a totally different thing to know all the technical bits that you need to know to actually make your idea sound good so you can play it on a sound system and people will appreciate it, not just for whatever it is that you wrote, but also how it sounds. Uh, so my idea with Rapid Flow was, why don't I take all that knowledge about workflows, about sound engineering, plus, you know, somehow also like fingerprints of the gear and bring it all into a template that you can use to really speed up your production process. I've sat in the studio with a friend and we've made five track sketches in one day and played them out in the club the next week, uh, checked which ones were cool, which ones we scrapped and then built those other ones into tracks. Uh, so literally you can do a whole track in an hour using a workflow like this. I have a video uh, on YouTube of making a track in an hour using the rapid flow template. It's on Ableton, but it's the same principle. So I'll, I'll link it in this video. Um, and yeah, the idea was to make something that enables people to make music much, much faster to get really good quality results. So a lot of my sound engineering knowledge, as you probably have seen, has gone uh, into this template so that you have a proven starting point for your production. So a lot of these settings are already there just for you to have a starting point. If you want to adapt it later and make it your own and change, you know, some things, of course, you know, for whatever style of music you're making or your preferences, but this is a proven starting point that will give you a great jumping board, A, to get faster, B, to have really consistent, good quality results, and C, to just have more fun and be more inspired in the studio by being able to interact with your music in real time. As I showed you at the beginning of this clip, 
uh, but yeah, by being able to just, you know, interact with stuff using a controller and yeah, enjoy the whole process much more than when you're just doing things with the mouse and keyboard and, and moving blocks around the screen. All of these channels are routed into something which is called the super channel that you can see here. And in here is where a lot of the processing is happening that we're using to interact with our music in real time. So we have a low cut filter, a high cut filter, a washout, which is here. Uh, then we have a reverb that is connected to everything. So you can kind of create big space, a short delay, a long delay, and that allows you to send anything there and use it in real time live. But also you can use it as a processing, like a, su yeah, a super channel to process sounds and then resample them into a cell the way you've tweaked it there. Uh, finally, there's a phaser uh, and then there's a, a gain to make sure that we're at the right level even when the fader is all the way at the top. And then finally, the super channel goes out to the master channel. And here is where we have sort of all of our, you know, typical processing that we would do for mastering. Uh, you'll see this plugin, which is called Sample Grabber. You're not going to have this because this is connected to my uh, spectrum analyzer. So uh, just remove this if you don't have the Flux spectrum analyzer, which you can see on the screen now here. Looks like that had to wake up. Uh, so yeah, if, if you don't have that, it's fine, just uh, take it out. But what the mastering channel, and I can show you what this is doing, it's really pushing the levels in a way that, uh, yeah, that you get a clean, loud mix. So let me play it to you without the mastering chain. So that's, that's actually the raw sound that's coming off of the template. Fortunately on Logic, it's not so easy to just uh, switch everything on in one go, but let me play it back to you again. And as you can see also, we have a very high um, constant volume level without it sounding super squished. And that is what a lot of these pre-mix channels are doing. So. In essence, if you add um, if you add your own sound to this template, you can't really go wrong. Uh, what we've tried to do is something that if you're a beginner, you're going to have immediately a really great sound for your track from the get go. And if a sound isn't working, very likely it is because the frequency spectrum that it has or the dynamics that it has don't allow it to cut through enough in the mix. So, you know, you got to keep working at it. Uh, and what I recommend people is to process your sound so that they're completely done so you can do all kinds of stuff with VSTs and everything and effects and whatnot. Record that as an audio file and drop it into one of the fitting tracks just as an audio file and don't start processing it in that track because this way you can actually build a live set with all of your tracks because you know that the first eight tracks are neutral um, and, and they're just there to make sure that the, the, the sample that you've added sounds good, the clip you've added sounds good. So you can use this as a jumping block to create a whole live set, which is what we do in my case with Ableton. And as you go through the cells, new parts of the tracks uh, or new tracks are coming in. But if you start automating everything in these first eight tracks, it gets very complicated very fast. So I wouldn't recommend you to do that. Yeah, let's go back into Logic and show you what else we have. There is also, in case you uh, want to go beyond just uh, the template, we also have some, uh, let's call them, yeah, software instruments that we've made. First of those is analog kicks. And what this is, is a collection of obviously analog kick samples that have been taken from machines that we have here in the studio. Like for example, the, where, where am I? The, the DFAM, uh, well, you can't see anything like this. Hang on a minute, there we go. Uh, the DFAM is in there. Um, we have the uh, Vermona DRM <laughs> 1 MK4. Uh, you can read it all on the website. There's a whole bunch of really cool drum machines. Of course, there are samples from 909, 808, and 606. I used to own a 909. A friend of mine had an 808, so I had the, the pleasure of tracking those, and I had raw samples from those machines. Also, a 606 I recorded from a good friend of mine and the Tanspare uh, MK1 from MFB, which unfortunately I don't own anymore. I kind of regret selling it, but I sampled 
the life out of it and I, I have loads of samples. So also you'll find kick drums from uh, the Tanspare MK1, which is amazing. One of my favorite uh, machines for kick drums. And what we did is not just record those samples and drop them in here for you, but we've actually gone ahead and processed them with a lot of this outboard gear that's uh, in the studio. So you don't just get another sample set with semi-usable sounds and you have to dig through hundreds of samples to find some that maybe work and then spend hours working on them. You know, we're all musicians also at Rapid Flow. We've been there. We know exactly how frustrating it is to buy a sample set and it's like, you know, 400 sounds and actually 10 are usable. So our sample kits are by design really small. Uh, we only uh, usually add uh, 16, let's say, basic sounds, but we process those sounds so there are additional layers that you can use. And so, for example, there are some that have been processed uh, only digitally to clean them up, and then there are some that have been processed with all of the outboard gear so that you immediately get a fat sound from the get-go. So let me play you uh, some of these uh, kick drum samples so you get an idea of what they sound like. And if I open the sampler, then you can also see in the bottom here what these were sampled off. So this is a 808. Another 808. And then we also do have a short percussive bass, which uh, was sampled from, let's see when we're going to get to it. Actually, I'm going to go to this camera, it'll make it easier. Uh, over there in the corner, we have a Behringer clone of an ARP 2600, which in various comparisons that I did in my studio, believe it or not, I compared it against the cork that's there, some Moogs. I used to have a Sub 37, the Vermona was up against it. Um, the 303 clone from Behringer was up against it. Basically a whole bunch of bass since I did a shootout to know which is the best bass uh, for short percussive basses. And yeah, the, the Behringer one. I have it actually on SoundCloud. Uh, you can listen to the files yourself. Uh, I'll link it so you can check it out and see what you think. Um, but anyway, let's uh, listen to this bass. I'm going to load a track here that has it in it so we can hear it better. All right, so let's have a, a look at this uh, ARP bass. I'm just going to solo that bass and the analog kick drum so you can hear them together. So we also have uh, a bass instrument for long sustained basses, uh, droning basses, which is this uh, Analog Solutions uh, Telemark. It's a note by note sampled in the sort of general usable range of uh, bass. And uh, we've processed it with the outboard gear we have here in the studio uh, to make sure that it fits into the mix well. It doesn't overload things. It cuts through while still giving you a solid low end. So let me open that up and show you. Uh, so as you can see, there are loads of samples here. Uh, let me switch over here. You can see there's loads of samples here in the usable range and then the super low and the super high notes, we have extended the sample, but for very deep bass instruments. So it goes down to a level like that's the lowest note that we sampled. So very, very low uh, and then all the way up to where you could theoretically already also use it as a some kind of a lead or pet chord instrument. So let me show you what this sounds like in context of a track. Uh, there is a comp well, there's a there's a whole series of processing also just to make sure that it doesn't get too loud. You know that it uh, it sounds correct in the mix, so protecting you from um, spoiling your mix. And let me show you what it sounds like in combination with uh, just the analog kick. Actually, we can listen in context of the whole track, uh, and I will play. Um, the sem bass, uh, and it just has a little bit of uh, side chain on it. So let me show you what this instrument sounds like. And of course, 
course, you know, it being a SEM, uh, I would recommend you to use the 12 dB uh, low pass filter, which is what the SEM has. And with that, you can adapt it so that it fits beds into your mix better. So now it's fully open. So let me bring that into the mix now. So that is your basic SEM bass uh, with, yeah, that you have a long sustained bass that will always work in your mix. So the idea with sampling these instruments and putting them through the outboard gear and making them available as, I guess, like plugins, you know, like sample sets inside the Rapid Flow template was for people that don't have this much gear, space for gear, budget for gear, to be able to access high quality sounds in their productions without having to spend so much time making them and actually also acquiring all the gear. Um, so we're super happy to share some of these proven, really good quality sounds pre-processed with you so that you are basically set to go and, and yeah, record your tracks really quickly, literally to use these kick drums or basses, all you have to do is just bring up the fader in the template, select your MIDI notes and you're on your way. Uh, and yeah, I think that even if you later on choose to, of course, make your own sound suit, whatever you have, it can be a great learning tool just to see how we've done it, how much mids and basses in these kinds of sounds for them to be able to work in a loud mix, even if it's a analog synth without it just feeling buried in the mix. So that was the goal behind these uh, sampled instruments. So there's also um, a sidechain uh, that's preset and built into the project. So it's just, just a sampler uh, sending a kick drum uh, to a bus, bus 100. And if you select a channel that has a compressor on it, in this case, we're going to take the SEM bass. Uh, you can see it's getting a little sidechain thingy here. You can, you can see it's, it's, it's showing you a little arrow. Uh, sidechain bus 100, uh, switch on your sidechain. And now if I play that SEM bass, So all of this stuff is already preset for you. You can basically copy these or actually copy uh, this compressor setting uh, to anywhere in the project and you immediately have your sidechain set up and ready to sidechain pads or whatever it is basis that you're going to be using. So I think we've covered uh, the most important stuff here on references. Uh, you can uh, basically load tracks that you want to compare to to make sure whether or not the stuff that you're working on is good or not. So if I take that out uh, and mute it and play the track I'm working on, can immediately tell if it's in the same ballpark from loudness and frequency and if you're using uh, a spectrum analyzer also you can see how they match up. So there is a referencing workflow in this. I've always found it kind of challenging how you can reference tracks while you're in the middle of a production uh, and this was a really good way. So uh, we're using in a sense a master channel uh, bus in the project and the overall um, output isn't being touched. And if you send one of your productions to a mastering engineer, please remove all the processing on the mastering channel. Uh, that will result in them getting a mix down, um, which is about minus 10, minus 9 dB full scale. So they have lots of room to put analog processing on it or their plugins. So we've covered everything. The last thing is we have added some standard send effects uh, that you can access from anywhere. So you can just add a little bit of reverb filter delay or a bigger reverb to a track that you're working on. Then as I would recommend, you resample it into a cell. Um, and um, yeah, with this, you have a, a really strong starting point for your productions. A lot of sound engineering knowledge is in this, a really fast workflow. Uh, and a really uh, fun way to work in the studio and, uh, and be able to interact with your music in real time. So we have the uh, standard uh, Logic Pro Rapid Flow template uh, that just has the top tracks that you see. It doesn't have the analog kick drums, the analog bass, and the analog sem bass. So the ones that you see at the bottom here are the add-ons. If you just want to get the analog kick drums and the percussive short bass, that's called the low end bundle. And if you want to add the sem bass to it, we have a slightly bigger bundle, which then includes that. It's called the power pack. So that's it. 
Uh, with that, you can uh, extend the usability of the template. If you want to have some analog synth sounds in there, some analog kick drums in there, uh, the sound of outboard gear, and uh, you don't happen to have that lying around your studio right now, this is a really way, great way to get in. Uh, regarding the analog kick drums, we've really done our best to keep the sample set really small. There's only 16 individual sounds in there in different variations. So there's the raw sounds. You get the raw sounds actually from the drum machines that we sampled, so you can use them however you want. Then we have a denoised, digitally cleaned up version, and we have the analog output processed version. So those are, let's say, the three layers of the sample. They're spread out over the sampler. So there's only 16 sounds in there, but we've done our best to make sure that every sound counts. That's That's been the goal here. Now, on the topic of, of controllers, um, there is definitely something here that I need to show you. So mapping, if, if you have an APC uh, 40 MK2, I think it's going to be already completely pre-mapped. Uh, so that's amazing. If you don't and you need to map your own controller, let me show you how that's done, because that's an essential part of being able to use this template. So what you do is you hit Apple L, and what you see here is the things that I have um, assigned. Uh, you need to switch to expert view. Uh, this you can ignore. This is just because uh, the last click I made in uh, Apple uh, in Logic was showing the mixer. But this is what you need to copy. Uh, so these are the things that are assigned right now to these values on the APC. And yeah, there's a few kind of little bits and tricks that you need to do here. So uh, I would begin doing uh, the faders. So what you need to do is, let's say we start with the volume fader. I'm going to erase this volume fader. Uh, so now fader one of the project is not assigned, which is the drums. So you hit uh, learn. You go over to the fader in your project. You wiggle it. And this is the core thing. Uh, when you do this the first time, it's actually saying that it wants you to use select a track. This is the way it shows up, which is wrong. Because then if you move to another channel, that fader will start controlling that channel. So instead of that, switch it over to fader bank. And this track is track one, so that is correct. Uh, let's see if it still knows what we're going for here. So it needs to be this fader, great. And now you move something on your controller and that's it. Now it's learned. For some reason, you see here, it's taking minimum and maximum values of 0 and 123. That's not right. In MIDI protocol, you have 0 to 127. I have no idea why it did that, but this is the way it should be. So if everything went correctly, yeah, now that fader is assigned and it's also assigned to that if I go to a different channel. Don't ask me why this works this way. I have no idea. It's super easy to do this in Ableton. You just click once, assign it, that's it, it's done. Here you need to go jump through all these hoops to make that happen. So the other faders you do just the same way. And one little thing that I forgot actually is I set it to exclusive. I'm not entirely sure, like I watched dozens of tutorials on this, but this seems to work. So that's the way I've set it to make sure that it, I guess it's assigned to that. And then on our super channel, uh, you need to assign uh, the eight rotary encoders at the top of your controller. Most controllers these days, you know, they have eight controllers, so you'll be able to do this. So what you do is you go to the super channel, which in essence is the live performance effects. Wait, let me take you over here, view smart control. So you can just go up here, view, hide smart controls. Ah, there's apparently there's a shortcut for it there, B. So this is mapped to the most important parameters that you're going to need to be able to interact with your music in real time, the way I've been doing. So if you go to um, learn again, uh, what you have to do I'm just going to remove, for example, uh, let's see, which one can we take? Channel EQ low cut. So this is the, the very first. Um, I'll take that down. I will now say I want learn mode. I want the low cut to be the one that's uh, in focus. And here we go. Again, it's set to select a track. I don't know why Apple does it this way. Uh, you need to please go to fader bank. This is on channel nine. So hit channel nine. Again, I did exclusive and now rotate the controller. And as you see, it got mapped. And right now I can close learn mode. And if I play back my track again, by rotating now this knob on the APC, I can affect my whole mix with a low cut. So the other parameters that are mapped is a high cut. There's a wash send. 
there's a reverb, there's a short delay, a long delay, and a phaser. So these are the parameters that you're going to need. You could ignore the top one. So a uh, low frequency cut, this is the parameters for the APC, but you can just learn that automatically. Important it is uh, to have uh, the channel strip set to fader bank nine and exclusive. Uh, auto filter, uh, you can see the settings here. You can just pause. Check that you only put the max value to three, otherwise it distorts too much. Uh, here's your cutoff uh, settings. Uh, somehow I didn't put this one on exclusive, but it's working fine. Important again, fader bank nine. And then you have your uh, volume for your faders. Uh, so as you can see, just the first seven faders are used. Please note that if you move the channels around, I think this gets messed up. So I'd be careful with that. I'm just going to continue through the volume faders so you get a look at what those are set like. And if you're using a different controller, obviously this should be the faders on your controller from the values. If you're using an APC, I think this is going to be really fast for you. Uh, all you need to do is just open this, I think. And then here we have on the sampler, uh, the last rotary encoder on uh, a APC that I'm using actually changes the decay setting of the hi-hat loops uh, that I'm using. And this is the way to set that up. Uh, so it's two cells that are being affected. Uh, but let me show you what that actually sounds like. So with that, you have a really easy way to adjust your hi-hat to the groove or also to kind of make it smaller for kind of maybe more toned down sections uh, or to just extend it to maybe make it like a noisy kind of build up like, yeah, you can. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, fun to be had with these real time controllers. So the the. Uh, what I was showing you is the mapping. Uh, these two here to the quick sampler, you need to select it the way it's selected here, replace this with uh, your controller. You can just use MIDI Learn for that. And what it's going to is, it's actually, you can't see it because it's cut off here, amp envelope decay, amp envelope decay. So the way you do that is you go to that uh, drum sampler. Here we go. And the ones I've selected is the open hi-hat and the 16th. That sounded the nicest. And here you can just grab uh, Decay, for example. Let me go back to Learn. Yeah, it's both just the Decays. Uh, so you see, actually, because I touched that Decay, it's already expecting it. Then I say Learn. I'm not going to put exclusive because I'm sending it to two cells. Learn, Rotate. That's assigned now. Um, and uh, actually it jumped to that because it already knows that's in there. So that's it. And then now you can control the decay of that hi-hat just using uh, uh, the, the eighth uh, available uh, controller um, knob. So that gives you the possibility to also interact with the drums in a really interesting way. And the final thing that you need is uh, assigning the master fader to the low cut on the drums. So if I go to the channel EQ on the drums uh, channel, uh, I can uh, move the low cut. These are the settings that you need. If it's not steep enough, it doesn't sound as good. You see here, channel EQ low cut frequency. I want this not to be selected track, but fader bank of channel one. Wiggle my low cut. And let me expand this so you can see it a little bit better. I realize that this should be on maximum 60. Otherwise, it goes all the way up to like 20,000 hertz. And then it's not that useful if you're on stage. So like around up to 500 hertz is, is pretty nice. So let's do the same with the bass. Again, I hit uh, learn mode. I move the frequency on the bass. Wiggle my uh, master fader. And instead of select a track, select fader bank 2 because the bass channel is the second channel. I forgot to do the maximum limitation also for the base. I'm going to do 60, 60 and 60 there. This one you can ignore. That's just because it's thinking I'm going to send it new stuff to learn. So now both the base and the kick uh, will have their lowest frequencies removed when I move my, uh, oops, that's not the one I wanted to go for when I move um, my uh, master fader, which is really nice to, to use to build up a, a quick break. Let me show you what that sounds like.
right? So like kind of a standard dance floor uh, dance technique. Uh, you can spice it up with a bit of reverb and stuff. So yeah, a lot, lot of playground there, but that's the assignment that you need to do to make sure that your master fader on your controller is actually doing something useful. So what I didn't mention is we offer a money back guarantee on all our products as musicians ourselves. We know what it's like when you spend money on a plugin or you know, a template and it turns out not to be for you. We want the stuff that we do to be helpful and to deliver value to you. So if it's not for you, let us know. We'll refund you, no problem. If it is valuable to you, we're super happy for your support and of course your feedback, leave it below in the comments. Uh, subscribe and uh, ring the bell, share this. It helps us to grow as a channel. And uh, yeah, on that note, let me uh, play with the template a bit more and make uh, some sort of an outro here. And I look forward uh, to uh, your feedback, your thoughts on this. Uh, we do offer a masterclass also that goes a lot deeper into all of this at the moment that's based on Ableton. It's kind of the same workflow, so you could very easily translate it to Logic. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out the link I'm going to leave in the description. It's a, it's a really interesting masterclass. I think, you know, from the feedback we've gotten, people have been really happy with it. So yeah, here we go. Let's make a bit of music. I uh, hope you have a great time in the studio, and I will see you on our next video. Bye-bye.